I finally finished building my own full spectrum sad lamps and they're right here. In this video, we're gonna go over how they compare to a lot of the other top sad lamps that I've tested. And I'm gonna show you how you can build your own if you want to. These are unfortunately not commercially available, although I wouldn't say no to a large sum of money if you want me to make you one. I'm only half joking. To my knowledge, there aren't really any commercially available LED sad lamps that offer the newer full spectrum LED diodes that are coming out. So I wanted to make my own because I really like high quality light. I think it's an extremely important aspect to health, be exposed to a lot of bright light, especially in the morning. So as far as these lamps go, they're basically just an aluminum cake pan with LED strips on the inside and a diffuser over the top. Many things make these lamps worth making, in my opinion. They're very bright, but they're comfortable because they're such large lights. They offer a full spectrum light source with no weird dips or spikes for the most part compared to a typical LED, very high color rendering. They're also flicker free because of the DC power supply that feeds these, unlike most of the other lamps once again. And probably my favorite feature is that they can be mounted above your monitors, which is just fantastic. It frees up desk space and light just feels better from above. And it's also more effective from above. The cells in our eyes most effective to circadian light are on the lower half of our retina. So it makes sense for light therapy lamps to be above us. But let's get right into how these perform. So I bought two LED strips for this project. I got the 5600 Kelvin UG Sunwave strip. And I also found a 5,000 Kelvin full spectrum LED strip on AliExpress that was like $25. I wanted to see how they compared because the UG one and all of the other premium ones, they cost so much more than this AliExpress strip. It's unbelievable. Just like all of the other lamps we've tested, we put them one foot away from our spectrometer and ran testing for an hour to get kind of an average. To my surprise, the AliExpress strip actually outperformed the UG strip by quite a bit. I clocked it in at 14,500 lux at one foot, while the UG was sitting at around 10,000 lux. When you plot these in a graph with other light therapy lamps I've tested, they perform pretty much in the top 10. With this graph, keep in mind that I did exclude the Aurora LightPad Max and Mini by Alaska Northern Lights because those things are so freaking bright that they throw off my bar graph. So I just knocked them out of there. If we move, however, to circadian light output, which is a bit more specific to the wavelengths that affect our sleep and wake cycles, we'll see that they bump up even further with the AliExpress strip now outperforming every other sad lamp that I've tested. Now, what makes these lamps stand out even more is actually the lux per square inch. One of the biggest problems I have with sad lamps in general is that they're really uncomfortable to have in your field of view. And that's because they cram a lot of light into a small surface area. And these lamps are actually really low lux per square inch, and I use the term glare for that. They actually perform as well as things like the Carex Daylight Classic or the Alaska Northern Lights North Star, which are two of my favorite lamps, not necessarily because they're the most effective lamps, but because they're the most comfortable lamps to have on, which means you're more likely to have them on for a long time. One of the reasons sunlight feels so good, it's bright and that feels good, but it's just because it's so dispersed. And so I find I vastly prefer light sources that have a lower lux per square inch like these. So yeah, I think that kind of sums up how these lamps perform. I love them. I've been using them every day. I think they look really cool too. So if you guys are interested in making your own, that's what we're gonna talk about now. First, we're gonna talk about the materials that you're gonna need, and then we're gonna go step-by-step step on how you can build your lamp. Before we get into that, I just wanna say that this is kind of like a framework. You can kind of like take this and run with it. You don't have to do it exactly like this. So the first thing that you're gonna need is an aluminum cake pan. This is like the best thing that I could find. It's a great housing. It's fairly reflective, although we're gonna make it more reflective. And the two inch depth is perfect for diffusion. So these come in like two different sizes. Usually they have 11 by 15s and 13 by 18s. These are 11 by 15s. 
and they fit a five meter LED strip, which is the typical size you get perfectly. The next thing you're probably gonna want is aluminum foil tape or vinyl mirror film. I ran experiments and found that adding some reflective tape to the aluminum pans, which are kind of matte, increases the output by at least 10%, which I think is worth doing if you're gonna go through the effort to make one of these in the first place. Matthew over at DIY Perks in his Artificial Sun video uses a vinyl mirror film. He says it's more effective, so if you don't already have foil tape, just probably go ahead and get vinyl mirror film instead because it's probably better. And the whole reason we don't use a stainless steel pan, which is already extremely reflective, is because the cooling sucks. I tried a stainless steel pan and the LED strip got up to 140 degrees versus the 107 degrees that we got on the aluminum pan. And I just don't, I don't like it. I think if you want this to last a really long time, we want it to stay as cool as possible. So yeah, shiny aluminum. The next thing you're gonna need is an LED strip. As far as I know, there are four choices. You can go with the extremely cheap budget AliExpress strip, definitely a good option, but there are better strips out there. The UG Sunwave, the Absolute Series from Waveform Lighting, that one's extremely expensive, but it's a nice LED strip. And then there's also the Lumatronics, which uses the same diodes that you would find in like the GE sun-filled light bulbs or the Norb smile bulbs, if you're familiar with those. To illustrate how much better a premium light strip is, I just wanna compare the TM30 data between the AliExpress and the UG strip. TM30 is essentially like an upgraded CRI. So instead of eight or 15 colors, we're comparing 99 colors. It gives us a much more accurate look at the color quality of a light source. And so if we look at the AliExpress strip, we'll see that it's pretty good. I mean, this is not a bad LED strip by any means, but if we compare it to the UG strip, we'll see that that's what a real high quality strip gives you. It just fills out that color fidelity range a lot better. So if you're looking for something that's like a little bit more like sunlight, I would go with one of the premium options. One thing worth touching on is the UG strips have a unique offering that none of the other ones do, and that would be bi-color full spectrum strips. So they offer strips that you can change dynamically from a warmer color temperature to a cooler color temperature. So if you wanna start out in the morning with like 3200 Kelvin, 3500 Kelvin, a little bit more like morning sunlight, and as your morning or day evolves, you can crank it up to you know 5700, closer to like noon sun, then you could go with a UG strip. You could also attach these to a smart LED controller and like hook it up to Home Assistant or something if you're into that kind of thing. And then you could program a dynamically changing full spectrum sad lamp right above your monitor that would change as the sun actually moves across the sky, which would be so sweet. I actually have thought about doing that myself. I'm not super into smart stuff anymore, but that is an attractive idea to me. That would be cool. So if anyone makes one, I would love to see it. Next, you're gonna need a power supply. Depending on what strip you get, you need either a 12 volt or a 24 volt power supply. To select a wattage, just figure out how many watts per meter your LED strip is, figure out how many meters you're using, and then add 20% to that to get the wattage. So these are using 80, 75 watts. So I have you know 100 watt and 120 watt power supplies. Next, you're gonna need some kind of switch and maybe even a dimmer. There's a bunch of different options for this that we'll go over later. You're gonna need something to diffuse the light. You absolutely are not gonna to wanna to use these without a diffuser. They're extremely bright and the tiny little diodes are really bad for your eyes. You have to diffuse light. You can use a photography diffusion film or like a frosted shower curtain if you wanna be cheap. I used one, it works great. Another must have would be mounting hardware. You can get a monitor clip mount, you can get a desk mount, you can get an articulating uh, clamp arm. There's a bunch of different options there as well. Personally, after trying all of the options that I could find, I ended up sticking with the clamp arms that can articulate. So you just clamp them onto your monitor arm, find the perfect angle and position. You know, it's got six degrees of freedom and then you just twist the little knob to tighten it and it just freezes right where you wanted it. It's like magic. One of the last important items that you're gonna need is a soldering iron. If you don't own one, and I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't, I'm gonna link to one below or a couple. I'll link to a tutorial on how soldering irons work and how to use them. It's extremely simple. You're gonna be just fine. 
seriously, I hadn't soldered anything in like two years before this project and I relearned how to solder in like three minutes. It's not a big deal. Just make sure you ventilate your area so that you don't breathe in the rosin or the flux or whatever from the soldering. I wouldn't recommend that. The last thing you're gonna need is some wire. There's there's some other knickknacks we'll go over, but that's that's basically it. Altogether, if you don't own anything that you need to build these lamps, it's still gonna cost you less than $200. If you own a soldering iron, that's gonna knock a lot of it off and, and so on and so forth. And then if you wanted to build a second one like I did, it's gonna cost like 75 bucks for the next one. And this all depends on what LED strips you go with. It's really not that expensive of a project and it just takes a little bit of time. So let's build the lamp. The first step would be to line your pan with foil tape so that it's nice and shiny. If you don't have anything and you're just gonna buy something fresh, again, go with the vinyl mirror tape, I think that would probably work better. Use a credit card to really press it into the pan so you don't have a lot of bubbles or anything. Next, you're gonna take your LED strip, whatever one you bought, and cut it to size to fit in whatever pan you bought. Leave room for wire on at least one side of the pan. So you wanna go long ways if you're using a rectangular pan. Here, I really wanna stress, measure twice or three or four times and then cut, okay? Don't measure once and cut. Uh, it's gonna be a pain in the butt if you cut in the wrong places. What a lot of people don't know is that an LED strip comes in five meters, but it's not actually a five meter LED strip. It's, it's several smaller strips that have already been soldered together. So if you look at your copper pads, you'll find some that are pre-soldered. So when you're trying to find the length of wire to cut, just make sure to keep that in mind. Uh, to give you an example of how this might turn out, with my AliExpress pan, I ended up with, I believe, four longer strips and 12 shorter ones. Because you don't want like a really small one at the end. That would annoy me, so I didn't, <laughs> so I avoided that. But you know, it's up to you if you want a little, little teeny tiny dinky thing on there. I won't judge. All right, so next step is you want to stick your LED strips onto your pan. This is important. Don't put them on oriented the wrong way. So you know you have your 24 volt in your ground. Just make sure all of the LED strips are the same because if they're not, later on when you go to solder, you might accidentally solder you know, your power wire to a ground and then everything is gonna suck. Don't do that. So orient them the same way and then take a blunt object of some kind. I used a toothbrush and run it down the sides of each LED strip. This will help adhere it to the pan. It'll help with cooling and it'll also help ensure that they don't peel back off when you're done. Next, we need to prepare our wires. We're gonna actually just use a single wire basically for this whole thing. You're gonna measure out a long piece of wire. Don't go short, go longer than you need. I use silicone wire, it's really easy to work with. And you just want to strip little sections out of your wire, as many sections as you have LED strips. So if you have 16 LED strips, you need 16 sections. I used like a clamp stripper, I already had one, but you could use a normal wire stripper or you could even use a pair of scissors if you wanted to. I'm sure that would work just fine as well. And essentially what you're gonna do is leave an inch or so of wire in between each stripped section and then bend it to shape. And that way, as we solder them on, we have a little bit that we can solder on each. We don't have to use one small wire for each one, which would be a huge pain in the butt. So you're gonna do a power and a ground for that. So the next step would be to solder your wire. Uh, you're gonna wanna pre-solder each copper pad. And if you want, it would make it easier if you pre-soldered your wire as well. That way, all you have to do is touch them together later on and just melt them together. When I did mine, I did not pre-solder my wire. And so it was kind of a pain in the butt and I slightly regret it, but it works out. So once your LED strips are all wired up, congratulations, you've now soldered successfully. We're gonna wanna route in our power wire. So we can take that in through the side or the back. You just need to drill like a quarter inch hole and bring that in. And all you need to do is attach it to one of your LED strips. If you wanna do an inline switch like I did, you'll just take your power wire, solder it onto one tab of the switch, and then take a little piece of power wire, solder it onto your switch, and then back to the first LED strip. So really simple, you're just kinda of taking a little detour, that way you can interrupt power at that switch. So that's what I did. But you can also just get a normal switch 
like a normal DC power jack switch. You know, stick that onto the side and then you don't have to do as much soldering if you don't want to, that, that would work as well. Now, one thing that you might consider here is actually using a dimmer instead of a power switch. So you can get manual dial dimmers. You can also get wireless dimmers, which are nice as well. If you go with the bi-color strip, for example, you pretty much have to go with a wireless dimmer. I did not install dimmers on mine, but I tend to like really bright light and I find these fairly comfortable as they are. So I don't really feel the need to dim them, but you can install a dimmer afterwards. So maybe just start without one and put one on later if you feel the need. The next thing I did is I secured my power wire around back. I put on a zip tie mount and I locked that in. That way when I move my lamp around, I'm not putting extra stress on the solder joints. I don't want them to crack or break or anything. And so this way everything kind of stays secure and it doesn't move around. Next thing I did is installed a mounting point on the bottom of my lamp. Basically just drilled a quarter inch hole and fed in a male to female quarter inch adapter piece. And then I secured that with a nylon nut. And essentially this allows me to take my light off of the mount if I want without ripping my diffuser off. If you want, if you're like, I know I'm just going to use an articulating clamp mount. I don't want to bother with a desk mount and yada yada. You could just drill the hole, put the quarter inch male part into your lamp and then secure just that to your lamp. And that way you don't have to worry about getting an extra part. And then from there you can put your diffuser on. Though if you want to change mounts, you're going to have to rip your diffuser off. So just keep that in mind. Okay, we're almost done with the lamp, but before we move on, I wanna make one important suggestion, and that would be to check the inside of your lamp for loose metal fragments before we power it on. Because if you have one connecting the positive to the negative, bad things are gonna happen. So just get in there with, you know, duster or something and just make sure they're all gone. So once you've cleaned up your lamp, we can put the diffuser on. I went with a photography diffusion film because I just loved the final look of it. It looks kind of professional. You can also just go with a cheap frosted shower curtain. You can go to the dollar store and get one, or you might even have an old one laying around. Basically just take bead of glue around the outside, lay it face down on your diffusion sheet, kind of press into it a little bit, and then leave it to dry and cure in a room and ventilate or whatever. I use some really smelly glue. So after your diffuser's on, we just need to mount it and power it up if you haven't already and see if it explodes. No, I'm just kidding. It won't explode, but it might burn. You will have to, of course, plug it into your power supply. You can just use more DC power jacks for that if you want, or you can solder it on, or you can use wire nuts but there's just a positive and negative. So I don't think you can screw it up. That's pretty much the DIY lamp. If you guys have any questions, you can ask them below. There are links to all the tools and materials that you will need there as well. There's an article for this. If you find that kind of thing more helpful, I also walk through how to build it there. So you can check that out if you want. That's about it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.